This is Acrite's latest display. They call it the View. You order it as a mill or turning display with either one, two, or three axis inputs. You see that it does have an LCD display. On the bottom, you got four hotkeys. It's help, inch, millimeter, set zero. By this graphic up here, it tells me that there's another page, and that's set up and enable reference mark. I can control the resolution on the screen. Currently, I have plugged into it uh, Accurite SENC 150 scale with the 5 micron resolution. I'll cross the top. You can see the different display features. You've got datums, tool offsets, feed rate, a stop clock, inch or millimeter mode, absolute or incremental, and then zero. Those are your quick resets. We look over here, you've got your toggle switches, you got incremental and absolute, half. You've got the calculator built in or the RPM feature. You set a datum, you have up to 99 datums. If you want to set up a tool table, you have different tools that you can load in. If you're looking to make a bolt hole circle pattern, you can as many holes as you want, put in all the segments. On this one, you've got the graphic illustrator so you can see what you're making. You also have an array, linear pattern, and then of course this one here if you're ma making a mill line and the last hotkey will be for making an arc. When you go into the Accurite view you're gonna you're gonna order this either as a replacement to an older Accurite display. If that's the case um, all these new displays are using a D sub style connector if you have older Accurite or Analam scales that have a round connector, all you need is the adapter and you can use the older scales with this newer display. Or you're purchasing this in a complete new package such as for a Bridgeport mill. That is going to be scales, bracketry, and then the display. When we look at the screen, you can see the help button. When you press it, you can actually look at a list of topics and then you can scroll down to whatever you're looking to do. You go back, clear, goes, takes you back. This button again will change it to millimeters or inches. Then scroll over, setup. On here you can talk about the units, whether uh, linear or angular dimensions, scale factoring, ax, uh, diameter of the axes, near zero warning, that's a graphic indicator. You got a status bar setting, job clock, council adjustment, language. Install setup. Push that one. That's when you can do your encoder setup. Currently as you go in there, the, again this is a two axis input. In input number one, I have a linear scale with a five micron resolution. It's got po a position track reference mark. I can actually change this from linear to rotary. I can go down and change the revolution from 250. I can go down and change reference mark as well. Clear out of that. Now we go back, scroll down to display configuration, push enter, display number one. We can uh, label it whatever you want. You can put in the uh, input is number one. Go down to display resolution and you can make it finer or you can make it coarser. Clear out of that. Go into display number two, push enter and let's say I want to make that finer. Enter and then clear goes back. Error compensation, you can configure linear or nonlinear error compensation for each scale input. Backlash comp between the encoder and the machine. Counter settings, you can make it either a mill or a turning application and the number of axes. You can turn on and off. Now here you see the view, the display, REF is flashing on the display. That means that the display wants you to home the axis. Again, I have only one in right now. I will move it and you can see how the REF on X axis stopped blinking. That means it has found its reference mark. I have nothing plugged into Y. That's why it's still referencing. You can disable the reference mark and or you can say that that scale has no reference. If you're not sure, you push the help button and it'll tell you what to do.